The next few videos will demo some of the more important aspects of this lesson. I'd like to start out by talking about the layers panel. There are a number of different type of layers that can be created on the layers panel. You can create image layer layers, which are called raster layers, adjustment layers, fill layers, type layers, shape layers, and you can have a background layer. Let's jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you how to create each of these types of layers. If you would like to follow along with my demonstration, I have downloaded a few images from opengraphicarts.org. You can see them here on the screen. These are the images I will be using throughout the demonstration for this lecture. It doesn't matter which image you choose for this, we're going to delete all the layers we're about to create, but you'll want to open the layers panel. <clears throat> the layers panel should be hanging out on your workspace no matter which workspace you have set, but if you've accidentally closed the layer, you might have to reopen it by going to the window menu and choosing layers. When you open an image file, it will have a background layer by default and it will be locked to prevent you from editing the original. If you want to edit it in any way, you will have to click the little lock to unlock it and then you'll be able to edit. When you do this, it converts your layer from a background layer to a raster or an image layer. If you create a new layer, so if you press the plus button at the bottom of the layers panel or hit the option fly out menu and choose new layer, you will also create a new raster or image layer. In this case, it's a blank layer, there's nothing on it. It's empty, but I could create raster-based things on it. Another type of layer that you can create is called an adjustment layer or a fill layer. At the bottom of the layers panel, there's a little circle that's half black and half white. I like to call it the black and white cookie. If you push and hold that, you have a number of options for creating new either adjustment layers or fill layers. The first three are called fill layers because if you choose them, you will fill the entire layer with whatever it is. So if we select solid color, we can choose whatever color we want, but the artwork that's on that layer will be solid. I'm going to delete that layer by hitting the trash can. Let's do one more. If we did a pattern layer and we add a new pattern to our layer, and there's a number of ways to create these, but we'll just use the defaults for now. Um, whatever you create will be opaque by default. And that's different, let's delete that layer, it's different from an adjustment layer. And so, whoops, I accidentally deleted the layer one. If I select the little black and white cookie and I choose anything from brightness slash contrast down, I am creating an adjustment layer. And so if I was to select the levels adjustment layer, the adjustment that I make allows you to see through the adjustment layer to the layers below. And so what I can do is I can adjust the darkness, this is a levels adjustment, the darkness or the lightness in the image, <clears throat> excuse me. And I can move the midtones to make the midtones darker, or in this case, make them lighter. And I can manipulate the image, but you can see that the adjustment I'm making, in this case, a levels adjustment, allows you to see through the adjustment layer to how it is affecting the layer below. Let's get rid of the levels adjustment. Let's do, whoops, let's do a couple more. So let's do, uh, let's do a hue and saturation adjustment. When I apply the hue and saturation adjustment layer, uh, nothing happens until I make a change and I'll use the properties panel to make that change but now I could slide the hue slider to change the colors in the image. If I don't like that, I can just reset it to zero. I can even decrease the saturation to wash out some color. But the adjustment that I'm making goes through the adjustment layer and applies to all the layers that are visible below. The next type of layer is a type layer. And if you look on your tools panel, there should be a T for the type tool. And if you don't have it, always push the three buttons at the bottom to see if it's hidden in this flyout menu. The type tool allows you to add type or text to your document. And so if I click or I click and drag to make a text box, I will be able to add text to my document. <clears throat> Uh, 
You can then modify the text using your options bar at the top of the screen so we can make it bigger. Maybe we want it to be 200 points big. You can change the color so we can make it gray. Uh, in this case, there's some adjustments that have been made using the character panel. So you can open the character panel using the window menu and character. <clears throat> and we can increase the lighting, which we'll learn about later in the semester. You can even use the options on the options bar to center the text. I clearly am not making that adjustment big enough. And then you can do a number of things to this layer. We could leave it at the bottom here where we have contrast where you can see the words. Uh, type is covered in a different lesson, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but a type of layer that you can make is a type layer. Type layers are very similar to the next type of layer, which is a shape layer. A shape layer can be created using any of the vector-based tools in Photoshop. So if you create a line or a circle or a star or an elephant shape, uh, it will create a shape layer. The shapes are hidden, <coughs> excuse me, in my version of Photoshop here under the line tool. You might have the rectangle tool visible, but you can select any one of these. We can select the polygon tool and click and drag to make a polygon and it creates a shape layer and if you look at it closely it tells you it's a shape layer because it has that little square at the bottom. Uh, if you want to start experimenting with shapes, play around with push and hold the flyout menu and choose the custom shape tool. When you do that, your options bar activates to have a flyout menu which will allow you to find additional shapes to make for your project. And so maybe I want to add some flowers, so I select a flower shape and now when I click and drag, I am creating a flower for my project. And I can change the color and then use the move tool to move it around. Whoops, make sure you have the right layer selected when you want to do that. And then now I could do any of the things that we've learned so far this semester, which is not too much yet, but one of the things we learned was layer blending modes. So maybe I could use the screen option and lower the opacity so that it's a faded flower on my design. That wraps up the demonstration on the types of layers on the layers panel. At this point in the semester, you should be able to recognize that there are raster or image layers, adjustment layers, and fill layers, which are essentially the same, but fill layers are opaque and adjustment layers are translucent in a sense. You can also make type and shape layers, which are very similar. They both uh, deal with vector art. And then there is a background layer, which is the default layer if you open an existing image.